Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, to Spotlight On. All right, here we are somewhere in the wilds of Australia, the Ancient Future Studios, and I have an incredibly amazing guest, a longtime friend, colleague, extraordinary magician, award-winning grandmaster, uh, gentleman, true gentleman. I, I could go on and on about the accolades that I would bestow upon him. Most important, a longtime friend. I've known him for over 40 years, and what I've seen is a constant and unrelenting commitment to excellence in the art. Please welcome the one and only Michael Amar. Here. How are you, Jay? So yeah. nice to see you. <laughs> and it has been over 40 years. I give over you a huge Can love you, you brother. <laughs> Great to see you. So nice to see you. And uh, again, always with something new and interesting and and fascinating and and uh, just always anxious to see what you got next. 
Yeah, well, we keep, we keep, we okay, keep, we're constantly pushing that, you know, raising the bar on each other, I think, you know, that's yeah. been our kind of our whole life. As I was putting together that montage, I mean, so many of those, I'm thinking, some of them I didn't know, because our lives have taken this very interesting. Sometimes we've been at the exact place at the same time, and we'll talk about some of that. We met early on at the, when you came to the Magic Castle, uh, in like, you know, late 70s. Like, 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 like uh, this... 79 80 81 and yeah. uh you were uh you were uh, what was great about the the fism thing uh, back in 82 was you know just the whole concept of, of your act i mean it was uh you know it's just so rare for an act to have an idea behind it and and here's the idea you know a, a young <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm not exactly sure how you define it, but a young superhero testing his powers out and and um, just, you know, was thinking that this was going to go uh, in all kinds of new directions for you. But I never saw it again after FISM. Yeah, Buck Rogers uh, called. He wanted his uh, spandex costume back. <laughs> <laughs> It's just build constantly building, and I mean you bring up FISM. That's perfect because I remember that so well. That you know all it was this perfect gathering, and then to have watched now forty years later, almost literally, almost exactly, and we're literally at twenty twenty two, eighty two, eighty two, and to watch the different directions. You know, yeah. and the ones, different ones have uh, either fallen off the way. We've lost Daryl along the way. We'll talk about yeah. our dear friend Daryl as we kind of go through this discussion. It was nice to see that picture of uh, Daryl and, and uh, Tom and Stephen. Uh, that was uh, in Las Vegas. Uh, yeah, you want to start you know. there? Hey, I, yeah. and that <laughs> I, was, uh, I got everything uh, racked up. Uh, let's see. I actually yeah, let such me a put wonderful it time. You know, that was... Uh, uh, let me let me set this up. Uh, I was I had it in a different order, but yes, here we go. Let's let's. Let, there's no particular timeline. Tell me about this photo. <laughs> yeah, this was when we lived in Vegas, and uh, with the uh, Vegas Magic Seminar, you know, Long Desert Magic. You know, uh, 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 let's see, it's the Caesar's Magical Empire. That's what it was. Uh, there at Caesar's Palace. And uh, so that was 1980, 1995, 96, and 97. And um, that was such an interesting time in Las Vegas. Uh, I'd never really lived around so many magic friends. Uh, and, and it's like every night there was uh, something going on uh, with, uh, you know, Daryl or Tom uh, or yourself, you were out there for a while and, and uh, uh, Johnny Thompson and it was just such a, that was a, a it. great time. Yeah, exactly. That 90, just sort of that second half of the 90s. Yeah. And part of the reason I came out because you were there and I remember I came to visit and then it was like, oh, this is so cool. Everything's hopping, you know, the, uh, and exactly. I remember the parties at Tom and, and Stephen's house. And yeah, um, I don't think I was at that particular party. I might have been. I don't that was, <laughs> that was yeah. I think that was a Christmas party that 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 tree. That's in the it would have had to been because there's a Christmas tree. <laughs> yeah, Stephen Mollica uh, got them uh, Tom and Stephen had one of those and they got us one of those and we still have that tree that's that's an artificial tree that, uh, <laughs> that, that we have used every year <laughs> since then so it's uh, <laughs> we, we certainly got our money's worth out of that <laughs> investment <laughs> <laughs> well and our oh geez well okay look while we're here uh, I just wanted, you know, Daryl was such a dear friend to both of us. You know, we get yeah, all the way back to FISM and beyond. He also appeared, yeah, you know, that we go back you know, 20 years before this at the Magic Castle, late 70s, early 80s, as you said. Mm -hmm. And Daryl was there, too. We all sort of, yeah. it was this yeah. natural, everyone was drawn to the Mecca. And yeah. we used yeah, that, that as the springboard. 80s. Uh, to me, really seemed like the the, the golden age of close up magic there uh, around the Magic Castle. That was, you know, close up was really coming into its own. Um, it was, uh, I think, close to the first times that people could make a living doing that style of, of magic. Uh, 
uh, you know, whether it was from trade shows or corporate events or private parties or something like that. But uh, yeah, that was just a, a, an amazing, amazing time. You know, I'm, I'm sure that everybody in their developing years feels like they, you know, uh, those are the golden years for them. But it really seemed like an exciting time there at the Magic Castle. Uh, well, I, I would agree. I mean, I, I, yeah, exactly. I think there's a, there's lots of ages um, when you're coming coming of age. But in this case, yeah. something about the 70s and us coming up with the Doug Henning and um, the wonderful world of magic and in the Magic Castle just became this absolute magnet for yeah. For so and Doug many. Henning, you know, but D Henning uh, coming to the castle to study from the professor and that really kind of turned that into that whole mecca uh thing and that was that was really cool yeah uh, you know? just it's, it's a amazing. totally different now, energy now i'm going next week it, uh, uh, tomorrow by as a matter of fact i go back that's out right yeah, you are off exactly that's why we we moved this uh one day ahead we got the equinox happening but also that you're back heading out west as of tomorrow off to the magic castle for the weekend yeah, you're familiar with the Peller Theater, right? Uh, downstairs, that's where the library is and its own little area. Uh, sometimes they have two or three performers working that room, kind of like the Palace. It's like, you know, that 40, 45 minute show. Um, but uh, every now and then they'll let a performer do the whole time, one performer. So you get to do like a, a real show, 45 minutes, uh, you know, beginning, middle and end. And, and they get to see a lot of texture to the show you know if you're if you're just doing that 18 or 20 minute set in the close-up room you know you might just need a deck of cards and a couple of other things you know but you do a 45 minute show you get the rings you cups and ropes and scar you know you got to do it all and it just feels feels nice I agree. I mean, the, yeah. the parlor to me is is sort of this ideal situation because it is your show. But as you said, the the, the chance to develop something into a 45, 50 something a little present, longer is is nice. Yeah, it really the, the parlor, becomes an entire experience. Yeah. What's cool about the parlor is that it's a rate. Yes. So now they, they get to look down, you know, to, to, to me, a, a rate audience is so much better than you're a buck and they're looking up, you know, um, it just really changes the angles. But if you can, uh, you know, just do this and everybody sees your hands and that sort of thing, it's, it's so a rate audience um, for me is, is really the key. You know, they all get to see everything that, that happens on the table and in your hands. Uh, so I love that. Yeah, well, we seem to be, we, well, obviously, we've all gone through this kind of the dip and the challenging uh, lockdowns and such, but we're coming out of it with a fascinating uh, hybrid situation where there are the theaters like the Smoke and Mirrors Theater up in Philadelphia, which had set up ahead of time and then they had to, you know, survive through the uh, lockdowns as well. But I, I'm thinking of them because it was purpose built with that idea in mind that every seat in the house is looking down on the stage oh, i haven't been to the is that uh, danny um danny archer danny, danny archer's, archers. yeah oh, how nice. regular shows and and again i say hybrid because what they're doing is uh they're both obviously live live shows but also they're the, via zoom so oh, it, how it nice. seems to be where what i'm calling the new normal or yeah, you know we've yeah. come out of this with this look even what we're doing now you know, you know two three years in, ago this would have been absurd to think that we would have these live interviews and you know straight across to facebook and such so that's a all right we're going to go back we're going to kind of come full circle because i'm going to bring us right back to this kind of current day i'm going to take us way back i'm going to drop some pictures not necessarily in chronological order but to some degree because uh, this this is the michael i remember Right. This, sure this an is the man, and I just <laughs> I love this photo uh, uh, because know, two of my too. three of my dearest friends in the world, and luckily one is still with us. <laughs> right, <laughs> boy, they were such nice people. You know, boy, what goodwill ambassadors for magic they were. Oh my gosh, you know, 
I, 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 Bill, both of them were like parents to me. I, in You can't say closer then, but the very similar. Bill, I spent so much time with him. Uh, he was one of the ones that p- pushed heavily to sort of uh, apparently to get the junior group in order along with Diana and others. Oh, how because nice. Because of that. And of, then counting down to the FISM, he was very active. I was working with him very closely. And, but of course, uh, Irene, you know, she was this yeah. absolute, inc- they were amazing. Yeah. That's so- a great couple. And boy, yeah, I really missed them. I hated it. You know, Bill was such a great guy. And and Irene, such a, you know, just goodwill ambassadors for the world of magic, for sure. Yeah. One of the things we've been talking about, this is sort of the constant theme with Diana and others on this program, is that if you take certain people out of the continuum, that timeline, that everything changes. I mean, can you imagine if there were no Magic Castle? I mean, this was a crazy dream of two brothers, their father, you know, the, the and... Uh, you know, they <laughs> tried to do it other place. It's it's so hard to make something like that work, you yeah, know. Well, we've been through it. That now they we can look back. I mean, tried. we were at the Magic just... Island together. We were yep. one of the first, you know, when when that first opened in Newport Beach. We've sort of seen these uh, attempts. Everybody would love to see it happen, but it just, boy, tough, tough formula. You know, they they got lucky. Uh, you know, they just, and God bless them because. Yeah, it really would be different without the Magic Castle around. Yeah, every yeah. single, countless thousands of magicians' lives would have been irrevocably changed. And then all the ripples, the butterfly effect right down the way. Every, you know, I certainly wouldn't I mean, be here. You wouldn't be here in the same way. You know, know, our I paths. Think it was the first venue that gave a professional room for a close-up show. It's like, okay, let's create a room for this style. And we'll give them their own little dressing room. They'll have a host. It'll, we'll, we'll, we'll feature this style of magic. Uh, and, and, and that legitimized close-up in, in a way that I don't know any place else could have. You know, they, they had J.O.C., they had Di Vernon, they had Al Goshman early on. And they gave these guys a, a venue uh, for that style of magic. And boy, everything would be different if they, if they had not. And, and, and another thing, the chance to perform 21 times in one week is your golden opportunity to really get on top of a, a performance set. Almost no place else gives you the chance to, to really develop something. Uh, in, in that same way. And, and that's, you know, it's hard to say what would happen without that. I've tried to explain to people, uh, it was just that idea <laughs> among regular performers of the Magic Castle. You know, you had your regular stuff that you knew was going to work, but that was the chance to try out a few new things maybe one or new things. And it was that Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, where you'd made your mistakes. <laughs> it was this right. classic thing. Anyone who went in, you say, oh, let's, we're going to go in early. because you want But, to but see there's it. no you know. better way to get better than to do it and then think about it. And then I'll do it again tomorrow night. And then I'll think about it. And then I'll do it again tomorrow night. You know, and the quick turnaround, even as you yeah. say, not only just one show a night where you okay, I'm going to go out and do a gig next week and I'll do another gig. It's like pop. You come off whatever was great, it was bad. You got to turn right back around. They're introducing you before you've had, you know, this, this, this. this. Oh, yeah. oh, I'm back on, <laughs> you know. Yeah. And Incredible that, that trial by fire. A, that really develops a talent. And, um, you know, I mean, it's interesting. Uh, a lot of people say, boy, you, you, don't you have to have everything really polished and perfect and perfected when you, before you get to the castle? And that's true on some level. But past a certain point, that's the place to develop new stuff because you can do it 20 times in one week and that's your chance to really make it solid. Yeah. Every, I think all of us perfected new material there. You, know, you don't go in with an entirely new act. You need your solid stuff, but it was always yeah. about wonder. And you'd even we'd talk it, you know, ahead of time. Oh, I'm working on this new thing. Come see it Monday. And then by Friday it would be ready. Cause that's yeah. when the magician can come in. Yeah. yeah. 
<laughs> cool. All right. We're going to keep going on our journey. Now, I don't know for sure what this picture is, but now we're going to go in. We're taking the way back machine. No doubt about this. <laughs> uh, that's, that is the New River Gorge Bridge. That's a bridge that was built in West Virginia between two mountains. And I saw that being built as I was going back and forth to college. And as it got close to completion, I go to this, uh, to the, um, down to the state capitol and find the guys in charge of this place and, and tell them, uh, I, I want to I perform at the grand opening of this bridge. And I go, oh yeah, well, I'm a magician. Well, what would you want to do? I want to hang off the, the side of this bridge and uh, in a straight jacket and you can set the rope on fire and I will escape from this straight jacket uh, before the <laughs> rope uh, burns. And they go, you can do that? <sighs> yeah, of course I can do that. And they go, okay, you're booked. And uh, so then it's like, oh God, I got to figure out how to do this. <laughs> and somebody that I had met <laughs> knew James Randy. And they said, well, you know, maybe Randy can help you figure this out, you know, because he does that upside down thing. Okay. <laughs> so I called James Randy. <laughs> you know, I mean, I'm just this college kid. And I uh, say, so, well, uh, Mr. Randy, I'm a young magician. I'm in college and, uh, and they're opening this giant bridge. And I've told them that I can hang off the edge of this bridge in a straight jacket uh, with the rope on fire and, and escape. He goes, really? <laughs> yeah. He goes, have you ever done anything like that before? Uh, no, no, never. He goes, yeah, you're going to die. <laughs> you're going to die, kid. <laughs> well, well, no, no. I mean, I mean I've been, uh, that's why I'm calling you. I mean, I'm sure there's a gimmick and there's, you know, and he goes, oh, you have no idea what you're getting into. He says, you're going to die. Um, I love the line. Yeah, that's says, you're you're going to die. James Randy. <laughs> I want to put and that on says, your quotes. Michael Lewis, right. amazing this, award winning this. Then, then, you're going to die, James Randy. <laughs> uh, he says, okay, before you get serious about this, do, do yourself a favor. You know, get some friends uh, and have them tie you up by the ankles, right? And, and go find some uh, second floor balcony thing and, and hang over the edge of that balcony and, and see how you feel about that. And, and, uh, and do that for a few minutes and then figure out if you want to set the rope on fire <laughs> next time you do this. And uh, it's okay. Uh, that, you know, and I get the rope and I get a couple of friends and they, and they go, hang me down. And so I'm hanging over this balcony by my ankles and it's like, ah, pull me up, pull me up. <laughs> you know, and it's like, this is crazy. You, you would die. You, you, you need like super duper stocks to protect your ankles and, you know, you're hanging by your ankles. So uh, I, I backed out of that show, but but uh, was committed to it long enough to, to, to like, okay, I got to go down here, figure out how this bridge works and, and how, where the rope would hang off and, and, and all this. And, but yeah, after, after one quick try of upside down by my ankles, uh, I decided not to, um, <laughs> Not to take so we that. Have, <laughs> we have Randy to thank that you made the transition to close up magic and not. Right. It's like, you're gonna die, kid. <laughs> well, there you go. There's your first priceless story, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my goodness. Okay, quick shout out. We got Robert Blake from Holland. James Paul jumping in from say uh, uh, definitely oh yeah, James Paul. Awesome, man. Uh shout out Daryl Sprout. We know Daryl. He's our uh, serpentine sorcerer. He was in one of those photos. Oh, cool. A couple of new people have jumped in. New, big fans of yours, of course, Alan Soriano from the Philippines. Uh, we've got actually a photo coming up of, of you and Chubster. Uh, Paul oh, Goodbody. Chubster. From, okay. <laughs> He's Chubster, the Philippine yes, connection. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, gosh. And I've actually got Doc Eason on a, a message over here. We're going to talk about him in a bit. I don't know if he's going to actually jump onto the feed or not. But Oh, how nice. Uh, yeah. Well, you know, he's, of, he's on this uh, list of, of guys for the uh, May thing. 
down in uh yeah we're gonna Key come West. to that we'll we'll get to that I'll, i'm gonna sort yeah. of let's i'm gonna sort of try to keep you know the best of my ability to keep a a flow going because uh, oh, there, some of these uh, places i was there and some i was not i sort of said that and yeah, we, we have this amazing, uh, yeah, I, I have such vivid memories. One of the things that I was, uh, it's a good thing and a bad thing to have a photographic memory. <laughs> it, right. There's a good part about it. Sometimes you should be part. able to forget. In your things. case, <laughs> they were always good. Okay, right. I just yeah. want to say that. Now, uh, this, look at this. I think I was at this convention in uh, Italy, I believe. Or, I mean, yeah, no, well, this is, you were at the one in Italy. This one is, however, that's the Magic Circle. That was the last oh. lecture in the previous Magic Circle uh, venue uh, before they went to where they are now. And boy, I, that, you may see Tony Antonio maybe in there. There's uh, there he is. Marvin Birdglass. Yes. Tony there Antonio is. right there. They, yeah. I'll say, no, I didn't look close enough at this photo. You're absolutely right. And, this was and, their interim. It was not their first place. They had this interim uh, for a couple of years. Uh, right. And boy, yes. uh, boy, I felt the pressure. <laughs> like, oh, sure, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, look at who's that? Bobby Bernard, right in the front beside Marvin Burglass. He's sitting there thinking, this guy better be good. You know? <laughs> yes. And he was ruthless too. He Bobby was. was he was yes. notorious for being just this ruthless. Right. He, you better he be didn't good. give. Me, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he ne never gave me any quarter when you know I don't think yeah. anyone. You know, no, it was, uh, it, but it, it was a, it was great. I mean, you know. Um, I mean, when you come out of those things, it always feels nice, but going into it, it's like, uh, what am I doing here? <laughs> yeah, oh man. And it's funny because you kind of went through the same thing where you were a young guy coming in and people really gave you the, okay, let's see how you, they, the, you know, you got, the, you got yeah, walking you know, into the lion's den. Yeah. I, I really was unaware of, 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 the nature of all that. Well, I mean, looking back on it, I, uh, uh, you know, understand it a lot better now, but at the time, you know, it's like that uh, saying, you know, I'm not sure who discovered water, but I'm pretty sure it wasn't fish, you know, because <laughs> when, you, when you're immersed in it, you're the last one to see it for what it is, you know, uh, to me, I'm just going around and, and having fun. It's like, wow, this is really good. Uh, this is a lot of fun, but, it, it was an uncommon situation, you know, to go in there, the, the expectations. I mean, that's why all those people were there. It's like, okay, this guy better be good. <laughs> and, that's uh, right. Yeah. yeah. So, and was, the pressure. Was, you talked yeah. about that. Again, I did it, you know, I remember my le first lecture at the circle and a couple of these other places where you know you're walking into the lion's den. I Boy, mean, you, you, they're going to eat you name. alive. It was yeah. one of the, Marty, 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 uh, I forget the guy's name, but it was, uh, he had a magic shop there in, in London. And uh, I, uh, and it might've been on this trip, but there was a dinner uh, for the magic circle uh, to kind of, I think it was kind of like their final dinner before they go into their thing. And um, they wanted the show and this, uh, this theater, huge ceiling i mean it had to be at least 30 feet i mean three fours three and a half is, is it's a pretty high ceiling um and i did the card on ceiling um at this thing and it was really surprising because it was a very high ceiling and the guy that took me to this thing uh, the this magic shop guy saw me practice it before the dinner started. It's like, let me see if I can do this. It's pretty high ceiling. And I tried it twice and it didn't work. I, I couldn't make it. But then once the show started, he saw, he's going to go ahead and he's going to try it again in, in front of everybody. And <laughs> I did, and it worked. And, um, and so then I did a lecture a couple of days later and he's introducing me. And he says, I'll tell you what it takes to make it in magic. You know what it takes? It takes balls. That's yeah. what it takes. It takes balls. Let me tell you, you know, and then he t 
tells him about this story. <laughs> and it's like, what, what an interesting introduction, man. <laughs> But okay this, okay now now i'm gonna i'm gonna ask you to because i'm gonna i know go you've told me a couple other stories you know, about I mean, this uh, there's an airport story <laughs> oh, oh, <on laughs> about the card on the ceiling, card on the ceiling. <laughs> i think it was the uh, rome airport or something <laughs> yeah. you gotta share this story <laughs> well, <laughs> come on <laughs> you know it's it's one of my uh yeah boy bittersweet memories you know you know i had i thought this was a great idea you know, I was going to put this, the same card on every airport ceiling uh, in baggage claim. I was going to do the seven of spades. And that way, everybody that flies could do the same trick. They could force the seven of spades, uh, make that card disappear and say, OK, where are we going? Uh, Chicago. It's already there. The, the seven of spades will be in Chicago. Uh, go look on the ceiling at this spot and you'll see your seven of spades. Is that your final stop? No, you're going on to LAX. I'll send it to LAX too. Uh, you go look at LAX, and this is where it'll be in LAX. And I'd already had this <laughs> card on like ten airport ceilings, you know. So this is like this could work, right? And and I was going to like put it in the magazine. So here's the airports. If you guys kind of pitch in, maybe we can get all the airports. We'll do all this same trick. And it was in Wichita. Um, I had just filmed for uh, Joe Stevens and Roger Klaus was taking me to the airport. And it's like, oh, Roger, hey, I'm doing this thing in the airports. And I don't know uh, if I do the seven of spades here, we'll put Wichita on the on the, the list. And uh, he said, oh, wait. It was like four or five security guards over here talking. Goes, don't do it here because these security guards. And uh, Roger, they love this trick, you know. And so I do the card on ceiling. These guys see it. And one of them comes over and goes, hey, well, so what's that? That's the seven spades. He says, well, how long does that stay up there? I go, it never comes down. You, it never comes down? It never comes down. Go, well, wait right here. And he goes oh, and makes yeah. a call, comes back over and goes, you're under arrest for defacing public property. <laughs> Under, under arrest? You got to be kidding me. People pay me to do this. People pay me to do this. You know, and, um, you know, it, it was all about the it never comes down thing. If I'd, have, if I'd have told the guy, you know, as soon as it, this dries on the back of it, it falls down by itself. But to say it never comes down was the exact wrong thing to say. Um, and so they were going to arrest until Roger Class said, wait, hey, wait, wait, what if we take the car down? So you can take the car down? Yeah, we can take the car down. <laughs> okay, that's no problem. He says, let the, let the kid catch his flight and we'll take it down. And, and they organized something and knocked the car down. But, um, but that really, that was the first time it ever occurred to me that maybe somebody wouldn't want that card on their ceiling. That was, that was a rude awakening. And, um, and so I started really, I, I actually quit doing it for a few years after that. It, it really scared me. The guy was reading me my rights. The guy said, okay, you have the right to remain silent. You know, what are you talking about? I said, Look, I, 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 this is flat. <laughs> the I card put trick. This stuff on the card and it, you know. Um, <laughs> So, yeah, mm, boy, it would have been oh. a great idea. If, if, it, it, if well, every airport I'm going had... to pause for one second because I'm going to say a shout out to Mike Platten in Oklahoma, our man, our, our, our good dear friend Mike in Spotlight Magic, and he's got an amazing magic theater out there up and going now. Uh, so, Louis, Louis Grande has jumped in. Hello, Jane Michael, big fan of your work. Cameron Schneider, amazing coin worker. Cameron, great to see you, dude. Uh, let's see, Daryl, of course. Daryl's jumping in and jumping in. Okay, so uh, shout out to all of them. Thanks for j joining us on this thing. Now, th I'm gonna pick this straight up because when you told me that this is this was yeah you know, this is probably 30 years ago when that story. I mean, I saw you when you first did. That was one of your original signature effect that was one of my signature. first signature piece things was the the car yeah and i would off you know you'd go i'd go into lecture rooms and i'd look up and went yeah michael's been here, He's been <laughs> here. <laughs> they would stay up in the ceiling 
<laughs> but I also, it, when you told me about this airport concept, that's when I started thinking, oh my gosh, this is like uh, uh, it, the, the scope of what you were thinking, how you this were thinking. Could have worked. Uh, it could it was have worked. Just, oh man, you're trying to put them up so other magicians can then go around. Uh, and then everybody like, that flies has a great trick. Extraordinary. You know? Yeah, the, it, it, to me, that was such an expansive way of thinking, not yeah, just to say yeah. I'm putting it up for myself, but to think, right. you know, in all these airports, uh, yeah, the amount of energy and effort simply to say, yeah, we're going to do a card trick, but it's not and, just and it'll be a community wide <laughs> secret, you know. Like Max Molini, you know, Mac, that's where I was. I, I immediately started thinking because we always heard the stories of the legends of how Max would take all this time to prepare. And, and I'm going to come full circle with this because one of my absolute favorite effects in magic is one of yours. Now, I'm not going to teach I'm going to let you jump on it in a minute. But it, it's when I started understanding the scope of your genius. And of course, we know genius and madness go hand in hand. So, you know, <laughs> two sides of the same coin. <laughs> the, the, the airport guard saw the other side. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. So we're going to come back to that. Now I have a handful of other photos. I'm just going to roll through these. Now we've already seen this one. Now we got uh, our friend in, uh, in the Philippines here. So here we go. Jump into the Philippines. Now I've been here as well. I went to the, sure. and yeah, the, man. the t-shirt they gave me and uh, uh, they got a really nice, club there uh and that t-shirt does a, a magic trick too uh, there's like a, tri a trick printed on that shirt <laughs> yeah it was i mean i've been there i think three times now over you know 20 years the the philippine club what a great group the manila uh uh, so and Ch Chubster's got his own little talk show as well. I was on that about six months ago. But what a just super gracious uh, group of magicians. Uh, uh, amazing. I mean, there's another guy that, you know, if you took Chubster out of the equation there in, in the Philippines, um, that, that would affect a lot of things. I mean, he's a really active, um, you know, member of the community there. Mm-hmm. Yes. Okay. So now we're going to move along. Now this one, <laughs> this one, I'm, I'm not going to say anything. This doesn't get not, but this it's actually definitely jumping back in time. <laughs> I remember this Michael, but not this occasion. <laughs> oh, what a blast from the past. Do you know who that Look is? At that, this one. I remember the girl. The I remember when she was your girlfriend surgeon of the stars. The, that guy, that's Steve Hofflin. And he would take me to these, the, the Playboy Mansion parties. And, uh, and you had to go in pajamas. <laughs> and this was, these were, yeah, I mean, that's when I really finally felt like, okay, boy, if my friends could see me now. And God yeah. bless them, they did. They, they, I was, <laughs> I did a show. <laughs> yeah, they did, I did a show. Or I, I was doing some magic at the Playboy Mansion. This is one of their uh, midnight summer's Eve party. And they would film for the Playboy channel. And they felt they got a film of me performing uh, at this party, doing the floating bill for somebody. And it aired on the Playboy channel. And like all my friends back in West Virginia saw it. And it's like, now he's good. <laughs> Finally, he's made the big time. <laughs> <laughs> I love this photo. I mean, nothing now, else impressed him. I said, "Hey, I won a fist of gold medal." They go, "Yeah, yeah, yeah." Hey, I did this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, I was at the Playboy match. Real. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That you know, you hit the big time. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we got a bunch of people chiming in on this. Oh my gosh, I got to go back. Uh, da 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 da. We've got. Um, Greg Gleason is on watching. Great story. I, I figured Greg would appreciate the airport story. Um, Jeff Thompson, uh, thank you for everything you've contributed to our art, Michael, Mr. Amar. Yes. And then come on, I think we're all going to second that in so many ways. Uh, just, you know, indelible contribution. Uh, so thank you, Jeff. Russell Parks, card on ceiling, got me years of work with Aflac. 
<laughs> I did it for a VP in hotel lobby. He was blown away. Work with them for many next six years. Thank you, Michael. It's that's uh, what we never nice. quite know. It's when we that it's the ripples. That's what I talk about. Yep. When we look back on the ones who influenced us, and then we realize, well, then the ones you know, in in this case, very much so, uh, the contributions. Um, and then Jeff Thompson again. Ah, we're asking. Got Jeff's Jeff's, Jeff's on, on the ball. See, he's asking for a story. Yeah, thank you, Jeff. Because kind of makes it real. Uh, do you have a favorite story behind the scenes of performing on Johnny Carson, or perhaps Carson ever performing for you? I didn't actually yeah, find yeah. any pictures of it, but I know. So let's talk about the, the Carson well, performance. You know, the um, Carson was the only talk show host that you ever saw before you walked out um, during the show. All the other guys, they want you to save that energy, uh, excitement of seeing them for when you walk out uh, during this. But but Johnny would uh, come around to the dressing rooms and talk to people and uh, tell me, uh, we want you to have a good show. And, and um, so I, I was on twice. And after the first time I was on, I did the rehearsal and I'm in the dressing room. And I hear a, a knock on the door. You know, it's like, yeah. And uh, the door cracks open and, then, and it's Johnny. He, he says, uh, say, uh, are you busy? And he's like, uh, no, come on in. And he goes, hey, I, uh, uh, they said you did some uh, interesting magic during the rehearsal. And, uh, you, know, you know, I'm a magician. Uh, yeah, I, I hear it. He says, so uh, you got a deck of cards on you? I do, I do. Uh, and I and he did like three tricks for me, he did good tricks, like Daly's cards up the sleeve uh, from Stars of Magic and stuff like that. So it was uh, it was a really great moment uh, for me. Um, you know, being in a dressing room talking to Johnny Carson, doing magic for each other. It was, <laughs> and and you no, know, he sent me um, after he passed away. I wonder if I could put my hand on it real quick. Um, his nephew uh, inherited all his magic and he sent a, a goodie box to a list of the magicians that had appeared on the, the Tonight Show uh, during the last um, like 10 years. So there was like, uh, there was only like 10 or 11 guys. Maybe I can find this uh, thing, but it's, um, uh, oh, this is it. This might be it. This uh, and he and he sent him one of their props. And yeah, look at this. So this is so Johnny's uh, stationary photograph of him when he was a performer, and Amazing. one of his props. This is a uh, the fire bowl. So I guess this is, um, you know, uh, you produce the fire bowl and you do that and it uh, turns to bouquet of flowers. <laughs> fire bowl to bouquet of flowers. What a, <laughs> what a nice thing to do. Um, you know, you, you were one of the magicians my uh, uncle really admired and you know, he left me some of his props and, and thought it would be a good idea if some of his uh, favorite magicians got some. And <laughs> like, how, what a classy guy. Wow. I don't yeah, expect that... anything like that from the Letterman <laughs> state. <Ooh. laughs> <laughs> you know? Oh, man. Okay, we're going to keep moving. We're going to pick up. Some, actually, I'd like some of these. Uh, we'll pick up some of these um, uh, directions when we do the uh, the Key West convention. So this kind of, some of these mm -hmm. things already gets us thinking a bit of more details, maybe get some recordings from the Johnny Tom, Johnny uh, Carson appearances and such. Yeah. However, we're going to jump ahead to, and now this is a guy, come on, this guy, another legend. This photo, just beautiful. Uh, absolutely love this photo. Uh, wow. So nice to have met Shimada again, after all those years, you know. Um, again, Shimada was one of the guys that used to hang out at the Magic Castle back in the 80s. And, yeah. And just have sushi help. with him. 
He would yeah, go out after the shows and have sushi. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so another one, I'm just going to kind of jump through these. Okay. Hold on. There's that. Oh, here we go. And then we got this. Look at that. Yeah. That's Josh J. That was at the table. That was, that was the first of the at the table lectures that uh, Murphy's did. And they launched that program. That was like a $1 lecture thing or something like that. And I think like 7,000 people signed up for that lecture, which was a, a record at the time. Um, I don't know uh, these days what, what these things draw, but um, yeah, that was pretty neat. And then we've got this one. I'm just going to roll through what this is. One of the great classic photos of all time. <laughs> That's me being very introverted. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice balls. <laughs> nice balls. And it was this big, I tell you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, man. But that's, that's uh, an action chart. I've got a lot of Mali chart of uh, Italian. That was Italy, for... right? Was that yeah. in the Masters of Illusion or one of the conventions yeah. in Italy? Yep. Yeah. Again, we traveled some of the same roads. I know it's amazing. Okay, and then we get to this one. Uh, talk about a ragtag bunch of sca scallywags. <laughs> wow, look at that crew! <laughs> look you know, at I this. had such high hopes for those uh, uh, magic fairs. You know, I, I was hoping there was going to be little all summer long tours. Uh, well, things. that was what the plan was. We just couldn't get anyone to sponsor it. And then some of the magicians and even magic clubs started boycotting it. That was what, to me, the biggest frustration was, as you watch yeah. these entire groups say, well, we're boycotting you. And you're like, what? Why, why would you boycott a magic festival? <laughs> yeah, the, the politics in magic were always, to me, so frustrating. But it's, this was it's... part of the good times. This was, I think, the second weekend of wonder in uh, Arkansas, Hot Springs, Arkansas. Hot Springs, right. I'm going to walk fun. around from, I'll just quickly do Michael on the upper left, Dirk Lozander, uh, Maxwell Blade, of course, he was the co-producer on that, Daryl Sprout, the the wizard, uh, some other guy, JSB guy, uh, the amazing uh, Andrew Goldenhirsch. And on that, man, that show we did was that we actually had him playing live guitar, and me doing right, the right. ring. so much breakthrough uh, magic. Um, and then coming around, the younger guy with the red, uh, I'm blanking out on his name, very talented young performer. The guy next to him, I don't know, he'll he'll make himself some Jeff Jeff McBride guy. He'll he'll, he'll get somewhere it someday. someday yeah. <laughs> uh, Rokas, all the way from Lithuania, and of course right. the amazing Eric Stevens. And yes. coming all the way around. So oh, yeah, nice. that was that was the very first. Uh, that, that was the second of the the weekend of wonder, and you were on a number of those. We had we did it yeah. in uh, one Asheville, vivid, North Carolina. One of my vivid memories of uh, uh, Dirk at that event was um, uh, he had just had the experience. I think of his son getting a trophy for like being in the third place and something, and and he couldn't understand why. Well, why did they give you a trophy? You got to the third place. And, uh, and he's just saying in Germany, they, we don't do things like this. You know, you, if you win, you get a trophy. You know, if, you, if you're third, you don't say, you know, here you get a trophy too. You know, you're the, you're the, you're the second loser. Why do you say you're the third winner? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> like, well, they're, they're probably a little more strict in Germany. But yeah, we, we <laughs> get a <everybody> trophy here. <laughs> it's funny that you remember that. <laughs> that is, funny. He goes, you're the second loser. What are you talking about? You're the third winner. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh, that's so funny. Uh, yeah. So, and the, the other things, just while we're on that, the, that, those festivals, we had the uh, street 
gala. Again, there was a whole bunch of stuff that I still have yet to see to have done again. The whole idea of a magic festival. And a few people have picked up on it and run with those ideas. Um, obviously, they wouldn't have survived through the last few years. Even again, I had this, as you said, these grand hopes of getting, you know, a dozen or more of them up and going. Uh, but I realized come 2020, I, I think, man, yeah. it would have, just, it that it would have just been a complete train wreck. Um, but yeah, they were great while they lasted. They certainly inspired a lot of people. They gave a lot of, man, to this day, I've actually got one of my uh, as students that I'm mentoring who says, yeah, I met you. I was a kid in Arkansas. You got you guys. It wasn't just me, but all of you got me inspired to be a magician. Oh, how cool. Like, yeah, that's, that's exactly, you know, oh my thing, gosh, you know? of course. You know, and Maxwell, he's got his, he's got the Malco Theater. He moved to the lar the larger theater, renovated that. You know, and everyone's oh, gone really? on. Daryl's doing amazing stuff. I'm working with Daryl on some just real cool stuff. You know, oh, so life cool. moves on. You know, yeah. yeah. Uh, but the idea, we had all these things. We had the, the, the Magic Festivals were great. Three or four years, we had those running. Um, yeah, so was and, just, and it might was still just, happen uh, at some point down the road, but... Um... Yeah, that was interesting. Well, we're kind of fun. working exactly. I mean, that kind of gives comes almost full circle here to the the magic, the hybrid event. But I'm going to actually we're going to before we get to that, I have a handful of photos uh, hooked up. This one's really cool. I This is that this obviously that same photo, uh, but oh, cool. great quote. And I would certainly agree, one of the most influential magicians of the 20th century. What a nice uh, thing to say. Isn't that nice? Yeah, I paid him for that. I, I <laughs> <say> that. <laughs> uh, but that I had, I had to, I just thought that was a real good one to drop in. But really where I want to go is this, because, boy, this one just completely touched my heart. Oh, uh, there's the young whippersnapper. Look at that. Yeah, look, look boy, it's I... like father like son. This is such a beautiful yeah. thing. It, Let's see. I've got Where my own I son have... as well. I'm thinking he's just a couple years younger than yours. I was looking at all these photos of of your son. I have four of them racked up here. Uh, yeah, let's see which ones you got. I got one that. Uh, okay, here we go. Yeah, you're gonna. Okay, we got that. Here we go. Coming up. This one got me because my son was very much for a while really into Minecraft. I mean, he's literally right now in the other room on Roblox. Now this is late. You know, he's like yeah. before school, he's burning up the Roblox. <laughs> so, he's still, yeah. yeah, that was a great. But this is it. Look at this mini me. I just yeah. love and it's this beautiful personification of you and Hannah. Just this. I mean, you see both of the beauty. Uh, the beauty and the beast in him, yeah, right? Well, there. he's definitely got her hair, <laughs> you know. It's a, oh, when he was that so, age, I used to say to him, "My hair used to look just like that, son." And uh, right. people would laugh, and they'd say, "Why is that funny?" Well, you'll understand some. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and this one, oh God, look at what a bit older, obviously. Yeah, there he is. Yeah. Look at that. Dag and he's growing up quick. And here's <laughs> right one. Up. Did you see this one? Ah, uh, this was my next one. Oh, oh yeah. yes, oh, yeah. I, oh, I love I this start? one. Now that was exactly. This is such a. Oh my gosh! This, I mean, is... Come on, if that doesn't melt everyone's heart, from yeah. the simple, you know, father and son point of view as the dearest friend. Again, having we've been through so much to now, you know, it's always good to have. They're, they're happy endings of some to to some degree yeah. you know it never quite ends but these are these beautiful Isn't moments that nice that he, they really mean the, the most so uh, how old is your son now my son is he'll be 12 in next month yeah wow in may so he's nice. a couple months a couple years behind yours uh i yep. believe yeah uh, my, my daughter's 14 so yeah uh, and evan is 16 there you go 16 moving on just when you thought it was safe to go back out on the roads that's it <laughs> he's getting his driver's chance. license <laughs> <laughs> oh so that kind of brings us all the way up full circle and that not that we're ending quite yet uh let me give a quick shout out jeff thompson J michael mar do you have any particular stories of jamming with michael skinner 
Uh, we got Michael Platten saying, That's... love this. There's no better magic than performing magic with your child. And yeah. Mike knows because he's playing, he's performing now with Sophie. Uh, I didn't want to go too far off on that because that's what an amazing thing. Russell Parks, congratulations, Jay. Thank you for so doing these. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, Jeff Thompson again. Yeah, let's talk about Michael Skinner. That's actually a good one. Uh, too many questions. <laughs> oh, did, and also, my, Jeff, you can choose either one of these. Jeff Thompson asks, ever do busking or have ever been, for lack of a better word, professional in your performance we did the, 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 I'll quickly say that we did the street gala shows mm -hmm. that not exactly the, in the traditional busking sense, but well, there you, you know, go. I'll toss it back like to the you strolling magic thing, there. you know, the strolling magic requires kind of a, a special, really outgoing personality. You, you have to really basically break the ice over and over again with small groups of people and and stylistically i always found that difficult you know because I, I see these people in a conversation and i know that i'm going to be interrupting their conversation uh, um and 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 i find a way to do it but uh, really uh it's it's not my favorite thing to do uh so you know once you get used to the idea of they'll introduce you and everybody's ready and they, you, you come out and you do one thing for every, you know, do a show for everybody um, is so much easier in a lot of ways uh, than, than breaking the ice over and over and over again. I mean, some guys have that personality and, and, and they love it. But um, for me, it, I felt like a professional interrupter. You know, I, I see you're in a conversation, but if you just hold that thought for a moment and pick a card. Now, I tried now. I, I'm going to drop into this. We were actually I was thinking we were going to be street magic, but I'm so glad you mentioned strolling because it is one of those things. And ninety nine point nine percent of the time they don't know. I always tell my students and others this. I say, I'll say, oh, but you're this great magician, blah, blah, blah. But I say, but when I approach the table, I'm no different than you. I'm the guy interrupting them half the time. They're yeah. like, and you have to be really aware. They could be having a deep, intimate conversation. They could, he could be getting ready to propose. They could be breaking up. They could, you know, yeah, you're basically walking in, you're interrupting whatever their space is. Yeah. And it is yeah. a unique art to do that, as you say, over and over. And it's I would agree skill, with you. It isn't you know? my favorite. I mean, I um, just do it because we get paid to do it, but you know, yeah. after, <laughs> after a show, it's so much easier, you know, and it's yeah. like, you know, after the dinner, after I do the show for everybody, as people are kind of lingering around, I'm happy to go up and do some things. See, now they're happy to see you and they want to say hello and uh, oh, you're doing something extra. So it just changes the dynamics completely uh, on that. Um, but, but on Michael Skinner, let me just mention this because he, he did give me um, a lot of advice from time to time. But one thing really sticks out. Um, he, he told me he always learns his tricks in sets of three um, because one always kind of leads into another and, and, and one kind of always cancels out the method that the uh, previous one used. And he said that way, anytime I remember one trick, I'm really remembering three tricks. And, um, and that made a lot of sense. That influenced the easy to master series. That's the reason we put all those tricks in sets of two and three. Uh, and uh, on those uh, video projects because of the Michael Skinner uh, and that piece of advice. Yeah, I never got to know Michael. I was actually just missed. Uh, I mean, I met him a couple of times, but it, I came, arrived on the scene in, in Hollywood. He was sort of, he was actually had just been managing the magic store, Hollywood magic, and then had moved on. And he was this legendary figure who only appeared once or twice and, oh, show, you know, show, show the kid something. Um, uh, but yeah, the, the, again, what we learned, here's the perfect example, exactly, these simple ideas and concepts you know that's a very good one. and, and will... one reason why he didn't interact with a lot of magicians necessarily is because he had a gig i mean uh steve went he, he became steve Wynn's personal go-to magic guy and uh a lot of the celebrities if he wanted to show him a good time well i'll send michael over uh and there were times when um 
if he was sending his plane to pick up celebrities, he would send Michael with him and Michael would perform for him on the plane coming back. So, so Michael really performed for a lot of celebrities. He was Steve Wynn's go-to guy and that was great. He, he landed a gig doing close-up magic. Yeah. Really one of the first to do just that. It was legendary for that. Again, it was this whole thing we'd always hear legends about. Oh man, I want that gig. (laughs) You know, the the resident at some of the wind, you know, the wind resorts and uh yeah, but well deserved. It wasn't accidental. It was just extraordinary talent. You know, you don't get there by accident. You don't get there by buying a few tenure tricks, you know. So yeah. Yep. Um, quick, quick aside, uh, just because I, I'm going to quickly go just, I just had this quick thing. Now you did the magic arts journal for a number of years. Um, mm-hmm. again, I was sort of involved, uh, per, in, on the periphery of that you, Adam Fleischer, uh, Paul Harris was, uh, to some degree involved with that. If I recall, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. then lots of books, I mean, oh my God, you most want to start as soon as I open up that Pandora's box of books. Yeah, the incredible uh, quantity of material you've produced. Well, and 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 L and L was a, a big player in it. You know, um, Lewis was was the first of the producers that that would like assign projects. Here's what I'd like. I'd like uh, something on the cups and balls. You know, which was different than than guys that would say, "Okay, I've written a book of my stuff, and I, I need a publisher. I need need somebody to publish this thing." Lewis was a producer. I, I want to produce projects. I want to get this guy. I want to get this guy, and um, was really the most aggressive producer of, of magic stuff that I'd ever seen. We had a great business background. It was the, to me, he was this perfect balance of, he had great knowledge of, of magic. He knew the magicians. He knew the, you know, he had an eye for magic, Mm -hmm. Uh, but he was a great businessman. Let's be perfectly honest. And a good producer. He just really understood. I want to put out as much stuff as I can. And, and then he got to where he felt competition with some of the other guys. And so he would go around and, and, and uh, book guys in advance so that, the other guys wouldn't have anybody to produce. He says, I locked them all up, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it was very interesting. Very, very, the quantity uh, of, of stuff that got produced, it, it talk, I mean, that was the, the amount of videos and then onto DVDs uh, that they got put on. It's just extraordinary. That was, uh, most of that would not exist, if, you know, because that, that almost, you know, past a certain point, None of it was stuff that guys, you know, I want to do my video. This was him going out and saying, hey, uh, can you do some? Can you do some? And because the first one was a set of three, and because that worked, then all of them were sets of three. <laughs> He's going to do the same thing until it quits working. And um, so that's, yeah, it was very interesting. I, I, I really miss Lewis. Boy. Yeah, me too. He was too. an interesting yeah. guy. Again, now I was sort of on the periphery of that. I remember when you first got involved. We we always did these very interesting things where I've always been an independent maverick. You sort of tried to get me involved and going, oh, I don't know, I'm thinking of going off on this crazy wild country over there. But I was and, always so and, impressed. Well, with- the music really uh, took you off on a, yeah. a pretty major tangent. We had tangent, a very different you know? path. Um, yeah. But I mean, nevertheless, really, I, uh, go ahead. That was please, really an amazing uh, chapter. Well, you heard that, that, I mean, that song that on the opening uh, credits of the intro, that's one of my recent songs. And the very oh, fact nice. that I've got these video skills now are partly because I didn't go down the route of having, I remember again, I have very vivid memories when I, you were saying, oh, you should get involved with this thing with Lewis. I, like, oh, I don't know. I think I'm going to produce my own videos. I explained the whole thing. Yeah, says, I mean, that was a real exact words. You, you go. Get yourself a comfortable chair. <laughs> you were so good because <laughs> you recognized I was going to be sitting down. for hours and hours yeah. on the detail of producing these videos, the the actual yeah, production I mean, that's side. A real, <laughs> I mean, you 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 grab the learning curve, you know, by the tail, and then uh, I really respect that. That's and you're still doing it with the, all this stuff now. Yeah, I mean, it's really you. You're not intimidated about learning to do something new, you know, that's well, really and that brings us full circle. Quality. 
Perfect. Now, I again, I think we're going to pick up a bunch of this in another episode of either the Spotlight On or certainly this little project we got cooking right here. <laughs> yeah, yes. you know, I was thinking about this. I am not exactly sure. Let me look real quick at this calendar. Uh -oh. um, <laughs> but I think that's March. That's May, right? That's May. <laughs> <laughs> I might be able to get down to Key West. Ah, um, that'll be amazing. Well, that's uh, what the, here's never the thing been, with it. Now, I've been be really excuse, recognizing you know? this, yeah, this new normal. Simply this idea of saying, all right, the, the very fact that we can right now, all, in real time, we've got literally people from all over the world, Vlad from Ukraine. Oh my gosh, Vlad, it's great that you're all oh, great to see, hear you, see you, dude. Uh, again, there's a perfect example. We got, you know, literally from all over the world that could have never attended the festivals or a single convention realistically. It's really cool. But this idea of a hybrid event, it really and particularly hit me. Key West may be a, a particularly good spot because that's a tough place to get to um you know as far as just trying to be there live um and and that's what kind of interests me and possibly going down live that might be the excuse i need to drive eight hours i mean i'm in i'm in orlando and it's still eight hours drive to get yeah. to key west um yeah, well so we'll to, work on that again yeah, I mean, to make that I a hybrid event if is we really can cool. get you physically down there all the better the idea is that i'm going to produce it from a distance a few people have messaged me going oh you can be in in key west i'm going uh nope <laughs> that's a long way to go I'm, from australia <laughs> yeah i'm doing i'm you know but the idea that's is a long way to go from orlando <laughs> It's the 25th anniversary of uh, the the Magic Bar, Frank's Magic Bar. Uh, we're going to do uh, galas, hybrid galas, some performers who are there, some from a distance, uh, focusing on, we had Frank Everhart on the show a few weeks ago, and that's what, I just cooked this up after that. I just thought, oh, 25th anniversary, birthday party, time to do something cool. Yeah. <laughs> and then I, messaged, I emailed you like a few days later, <laughs> I got this crazy idea. <laughs> <laughs> Let's make and it Doc happen. Eason, I'm about to message with him, as I said. Uh, so all the info on that, uh, again, I'll come right back up. Uh, that's uh, the tickets are available. Fifty dollars for the whole thing. I mean, that includes recordings of you know, all the wow. primary events, the lectures, the close-up gala, and it really emphasizes the bar magic. Bar magic close up. It's one of these uh, sides of magic that Frank's father was one of the pioneers of uh, the development of the uh, the, 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 the Sam the Bell bar magic style. Yeah. Yeah. The Sam the Bell hop effect. We're going to do the world's first Sam the Bell hop gala magic with a bar. handful of the That's masters great. of the effect and then actually a lecture to follow. Everyone gets to sort of uh, kind of group lecture. So a handful of things that have never been done before. Uh, so th that's going to be very cool. Gino DeVille will be joining us from China, and he's been doing his own version of Sam the Bellhop for years. Greg Otto, uh, his connection is that he would get off the, the moment I told him what we were up to on Facebook, he says, oh, yeah, yeah, I well, used to drop, you know, when he did the cruise ships, he would go through Key West all the time, and he knew oh, Captain nice. Bill Gross Cup, and he says, oh, man, I got so many stories, so, and we need some cool. comedy, because let's be honest, Greg's the amazing comedy uh, comedian magician, John oh, Johnson can uh, actually make a trip down, of course, Frank Everhart's already there, and a lot more to be uh, to be included so uh i definitely that's happening we'd love to have i'm so glad that you're going to be a part of this and if you can make it down all that the would better. be really fun if i can make it down i i'll, I'll give it a shot you know yeah interesting well, we enough, gotta, hannah's working on um working with her, her best friend that was lived two doors down from here is in the um the film industry and she, uh, she creates budgets for movies and 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 all and has asked Hannah to be her like first assistant on a couple of things. So this has been going on for a little over a year and she is in Miami now. They're filming in Key West. 
They're filming um, a series for for Apple TV called Bad Monkey. Uh, Vince Vaughn and uh, a few other, but they're filming between now and August, ten episodes. So they may be down there. I mean, uh, it, it'll be interesting to see uh, if, if uh, you know, it, it, it might work out uh, to have a, a reason to go down there. And, and Hannah might have a chance to go down. And, um, Maybe make well. it a family trip. So yeah. we will keep I mean, everyone <clears throat> apprised of that. Yeah, uh, could happen. Again, we've got just seven, seven, just over eight weeks off. So the 14th, 15th, that's a Saturday, Sunday. So if you can physically make it down, that's great, everyone else. But it's the whole thing is it will be a, a var, via Zoom virtual webcasting. So a natural hybrid, Oof. this natural hybrid idea. So, okay, Michael, I'm going to give you last words here because I just kind of final thoughts whether it's a fun story, crazy story, inspirational. I always like saying, well, we've gone from past to present into the future, looking ahead. I know you never well, stop I, creating. I, I, I think you really have your finger on the, the pulse of things um, these days, Jay. I think that this whole hybrid experience is really part of our future. You know, I didn't, I didn't anticipate the Zoom thing being as successful as it, it has been. You know, I thought uh, this whole pandemic thing would be a couple of months and would all be back to it. But it seems like this whole Zoom thing is, is here to stay. And some guys have really developed that market in a great way. Uh, I thought um, I thought there wouldn't be much work for a Zoom thing. Turns out there might be more work for, for the Zoom stuff than there was for live performances. <clears throat> you know, uh, at, at any given meeting, only every now and then would they think we should have an entertainer. But every company is having Zoom meetings every day now. <clears throat> and all of them uh, would, are thinking, boy, it'd be nice to have something to kind of bump up this experience and make it more interesting and more memorable. <clears throat> so the guys that, that embraced that idea <clears throat> of uh, developing the Zoom market have done really well with it. And, and are very successful. I've got a good friend here in, in Orlando, who's very professional, very successful guy who hasn't done a live show in two years and has done more business than ever, but now stays home. So you can see what the future's got for us, but it sounds like you, you got your finger right on the, the pulse of it. And, and um, yeah, it'll be fun to see what happens there in, in Key West could be a perfect combination. Yeah, well, I'm coaching people as well. And even like yourself, you know, I'm about to talk to Doc Eason and coach going to basically try to coach him on how to set up a basic Zoom studio. You know, to, then Paul Draper and others are doing that. So the some of us who took the lead are now saying, hey, guys, jump on in. The water's fine. It's not that, yeah. you know, how to set up a basic structure, OBS, you know, whatever yeah. the level, but to have a professional production. And I realized that's what, it, you know, two years ago, I'm like going, okay, so you mean I can have my own TV show? Okay, yeah, I can do this. And you and I talked, I said, I was getting offers for kids shows. And I went, oh, I could be like Captain Kangaroo. And I yes. had this whole idea. I was like, well, I could do that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, So and you will. Yeah, <laughs> and it's survival of the fittest is adapting to change. So, yep. you know, I'm looking well, forward really to- Needed to be nimble and magic for the last 40 years. You know, the market has changed several times. You know, trade shows have come and gone and, and have come back again and, and comedy clubs came and went. And, um, corporate shows really uh, have been up and down. So you, uh, to survive, you needed to be nimble for sure uh, in yeah. magic. And that remains true today. Wow. Okay, well, and we're going to pick this up. This is sort of a perfect place to sort of wrap up and uh, simply drop a chapter line because Michael and I could obviously easily can sit and talk for uh, much, much longer. Uh, I think we're going to, this will help us get an idea of, of subjects and stuff to bring into the Key West Convention. Thank you so much, Michael. Again, dear Always friend, a pleasure, Jay. brother, just in every I way. Love, so much I love respect. this. You're 6,000 miles away. And um, and here you are in my home, 
and I don't have to cook for you or, or <laughs> this, this couldn't be better. <laughs> uh, it's amazing. I know yeah. when you think that the technology is like that's a, by this idea of saying let's uh, teach and, and share the most ancient of arts using the most advanced technologies. And that's yeah. what's come out of this. That's you know, cool. the, the silver lining of our current situation. Exactly. So, uh, love to you, brother. I'm going to drop you guys. out. You could say your goodbyes to everyone, and we will see you soon. Everyone Thank will you. give you more info on the festival. Great so. to see you, Jay. And All so right. nice that these guys uh, decided to join us. And yeah. uh, well, we'll be doing it again soon, my friend. Take Absolutely. care. All right. All well, best. Okay. So, thank you, everyone. I won't dig belabor that at all i will drop the info the key west uh, magic uh, hybrid festival i'll drop that info that info is on my page it's also on the um, the uh, academy of illusions page so it re readily available i'll follow up with the details on that michael's mage mr magic Dot com. If you simply Google uh, Michael Amar, that comes up. He's got lots of his products available, so please support Michael as well. Uh, and boy, we're again, counting down. Michael, once again, he's off to the Magic Castle. So if you are anywhere in the LA area, please get out and see him this weekend. And otherwise, thanks so much. Well, once again, this is this perfect example of what we can do amidst all the challenges. Thank you all for joining us. And that's it. We are out of here.